الله الكريم الكريم الوهاب الرحيم تواب غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا اله الا هو يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين ويغفر المخطئين المستغفرين لا اله الا هو اله الاولين والاخرين جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم اشهد ان لا اله الا هو واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله رحمه للعالمين فشرح به الصدور وانار به العقول وفتح به اعين نميا واذانا ثم وقلوبا غلفا صلوات الله وتسليماته وتبركاته عليه وعلى اهل بيته يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما all praises due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We seek His help, we ask for His forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Him from the evil of our own selves. Whomever Allah guides to the Siratul Mustaqim, to guidance from Allah, then none can misguide them. And whomever Allah Azza wa Jal allows to go astray, then none can bring them to guidance. I testify that there is absolutely nothing worthy of worship except Allah Jalla wa ala. And I testify along with that that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. And after him, there were no more prophets. There were no more messengers. There are no more prophets. There are no more messengers. There is no more wahi or revelation after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until yawm al qiyamah and it is him alone that deserves to be obeyed obedience to the messenger is obedience to Allah and indeed that which he left with us sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam will benefit us in this life and in the akhirah and whatever he told us to stay away from Whatever he left with us and told us that it will harm us in this life and in the akhirah, it is haq, it is reality, it is real, and it must be trusted, and it can be trusted because it comes from Allah Jalla wa Ala. And we find in the example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling us, admonishing us. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we spoke about yesterday, a taqwa, having fear or consciousness, awareness of Allah azza wa jal, in all that we do, in every place that we are, at all times, all moments of our lives. But there is one thing that comes along with that, that follows that, and is part of that. None of this is inseparable. None of this, all of the brothers, all of the Imams, what they were speaking about yesterday and today, and what they will speak about, it is all interlinked. Walillahi alhamd. We must turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must have or make tawbah to Allah jalla wa ala. Every single one of us here today, every single one of us in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Tawbah, sincere tawbah, sincere repentance to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal knows us best. 
ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير. Doesn't he know his creation best? Allah Azza wa Jal knows us best and he knows what's good for us. And we don't know, we don't realize. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That's best for you. That's best for me. That's best for us. If we only knew, if we only realized. And it's not only a knowledge, oh, we know the ayah. It's realizing the reality of it. How you are in need. How we are in need of tawbah, of making repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal all the time. Because we don't know what has been forgiven. We don't know if Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is accepting from us. And we don't know some things even we don't realize sometimes and we're ghafil, we're heedless. And we try to ignore. We're committing sins day and night. We're making mistakes and falling short. But there is hope. There is hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is hope for forgiveness. Maghfira min Allahi jalla wa ala. Forgiveness from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illa Allah. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ If you were to go to someone and ask them for something, from Banu Adam, from us, even from the Muslims, and they would give you, and they would help you out, and they would advise you, and they would let you stay, and they would welcome you in, and then you were to go to them again, maybe they would do the same thing, they would welcome you, and they would help you, and then you go to them again and they start to get irritated. They start to try to make excuses. And maybe now it's kind of a burden. It's kind of a hassle. And this is how Banu Adam are. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could we go to anyone? How could we go to anyone when they cannot avail us anything? They cannot benefit us anything. And now when it comes to forgiveness of sins, وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And who can forgive the sins except Allah? تَعَالَى اللَّهُ وَتَقَدَّسِ So this command, this order, this admonition comes from Allah رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ The revelation, the wahi given to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Remember we said, if you include yourself in that address, إِخْوَةِ فِي اللَّهِ وَأَخَوَاتِ فِي اللَّهِ الْمُبَارَكُونَ If you include yourself with those who believe, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Tawbah, turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al ghafurur rahim Al-Wadood, Ghafurudur Rahma. Tubu ila Allah, Tawbatan Nasuha. A sincere, a correct tawbah. The correct tawbah, the correct repentance. You mean it, and none other than Allah knows the reality of your nafs, of your inside, of whether you truly mean it, whether you are sincere. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ There's that word again. There's that category. Oh, you who believe, all of you, turn in repentance to Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ So that what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that you may be successful, so that you will survive in this life and in the hereafter. 
لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And he knows us best. So when will that be? أَحِبَّتِي فِي اللَّهِ When will that be? We need to ask ourselves, I need to ask myself constantly in my five salawat, at the end of the day, when I wake up for a new day, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me another opportunity, we need to ask, when will that be? Are we going to wait? Are we going to delay? And say, sawfa, sawfa atub, soon I will repent. When will that be? Ahibbati fi Allah. Maybe we say, the next Ramadan, which will be on upon our doorstep very shortly again. May Allah allow us to reach another Ramadan. When will that be though? Maybe we say that next Ramadan. Maybe we say when I go to Hajj. Maybe the, we say when I get married. And maybe we say when my children grow up. And maybe we say when I retire. Who's promising us that? Hey, wallah. Who's promising us that meeting or that appointment? It is none other than shaitan. It is none other than shaitan promising us that we'll live till tomorrow, that we'll live till next week, that we'll live to Jumu'ah, that we live to Ramadan, and that we live to so and so and such and such. When will that be? Ahibbati fi Allah. Or do we say, Wal iyadu billah, false hope? Or do we say, right before I die, I will say, La ilaha illallah, or I'll make tawbah, and then I'll stop for sure, and I'll regret, or I'll make tawbah, and then I'll be okay. Man kana akhira kalam min ad dunya, La ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah, e wallah. Whoever's last and final words before they leave this life is La ilaha illallah, they will enter into Jannah. Our Prophet wasallam promised us that. We know that for sure. But who said that you will make that appointment? Who said that right before that soul comes out, right before I die, right before the angel of death comes, I will have that opportunity. How many are those? The car accident, it happens within the splits of a zero or a fraction of a second, and they die. How many are those that they go to sleep and they never wake up? How many are those that a sickness, it comes upon them, and before they know it, they die? And death, al maut. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every single soul will taste death. And Allah did not say, rather it's the opposite. That it comes to the old people first and then to the young people. It comes to the sick people first and then to the healthy people. لَا وَاللَّهِ it comes unannounced. And so that's why the tawbah, the repentance, must be on a daily basis, must be all the time. And that's why, what better way by then the five salawat in your sujood, Rabbi ghfirli, warhamni, Allahumma ghfirli, warhamni. Asking Allah to forgive you. Always, constantly, and never losing the opportunity, the chance in Ramadan, in that hour on that day of Jumu'ah, around Asr time, between the Adhan and the Iqamah. Don't you see so many opportunities that we have that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with? The forgiveness is there from Allah Al Ghafurul Rahim. The opportunity for Rahma min Allah, forgiveness of your sins, your sins to be wiped away now in this life. Before a day comes when people will regret and people will bite at their fingers and people will be abandoning everyone, their own children, their own parents, their friends, their companions that they used to have in this life, 
Everyone will go their own way and they will say, Nafsi, Nafsi. What if it so happens that we delay and we delay and we delay until Hatta, until Allah says, Hatta what we were just speaking about. What if it comes until death comes to one of them and then they say, They will say, Oh my Lord, may Allah save us. Send me back. Why? Send me back to the dunya. Because the death is the first step to the akhirah. There's that barzakh. There's that barrier now between the dunya and the next life. And you have gone forward now. When you die, the servant of Allah goes forward. They cannot go back. It cannot be delayed. You cannot return to come back and do righteous deeds to change your ways, to fix yourself, to repent, to say astaghfirullah. Imagine a saying, few words. You cannot come back after you die and say, Allahumma ghfirli, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You can no longer do two rak'ah of prayer. You can no longer do sujood. You can no longer give sadaqah even a little bit. La wallah. Why do they want to come back? Why will they want to return to the dunya? Why will they want to come back? So I can do. So I can do. They didn't do in the dunya. They didn't move in the dunya. While they had the chance in this life, they were asleep. They didn't do. So I can go back and do righteous deeds, the things that I didn't do in this life. See, the thing is sometimes, Ayyuhal Mubarakun, may Allah have mercy upon us. The thing is that we don't reflect on the Quran. We, a lot of us have made hijrah from the Quran. Like the ulama have said, when they make hijrah of the Quran, they abandon it. It's not only closing it up and putting it on the shelf, but not reading it, not reciting it, not memorizing it, not studying it, not understanding, not reflecting, not pondering, not implementing, not acting on it. Look when they asked Aisha radiallahu anha about her beloved husband, our beloved messenger, Habibuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his khuluq? What was his behavior? What was his manners? Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. Implementation of the Qur'an. Adab and manners and character, behavior with Muslims, with his companions, with his family, with non-Muslims, with the people in, around, with the people that you live with, manners. How many of those on the earth or in the past generations have accepted Islam, have become Muslim, have testified to La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, based on some character or based on some adab or manners that they have seen from other Muslims. Just seeing them, behavior. And at the same time, how many have turned away? <clears throat> because of something they seen, because of manners, because of behavior that they have seen, and they turned away from La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We don't want to be in those. We don't want to be from those that regret or the time of death comes to us. May Allah give us husn al khatima, a good ending to our lives, so that we don't come and we be one of those that we are regretting and we want to go back so that we can do good deeds now. And it will be said to them, Kalla, Kalla, innaha kalimatun huwa qailunga. 
It's too late. It's too late. You have to go forward. It's time to go forward to the next life, to the first step, to the next life, and into your grave, to the qabr, where you will be asked the ultimate test. Forget about the test that you had in this life. They will mean nothing. They will seem like nothing. There will be people, individuals that will wish they could go back and get away from this now, this fitan. This trials and these tests. Man rabbuk, ma dinuk, man nabiyuk. What was your religion? What was your, who was your Lord? What was your religion? Who was that man that was sent to you, that your prophet? And it's not going to be just something that you memorize in this life. It has to be something implemented. You learned and you nurtured your nafs, you nurtured your heart, you nurtured yourself upon. It has to be there. So how should this tawbah be? How should this repentance be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This tawbah, it has shuruq, it has conditions. Because how many are those that they are lost in sin? They are lost in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they think at the end of the day, can you imagine? They refuse to pray. They don't want to pray. They know that five salawat have been written on us. Kutiba alayna. Five salawat, which is the most important part of this religion after tawheed of Allah azza wa jal. They know, but they go about happy and content in this life. And they think that just praying once a year in Ramadan or praying the night prayer, which is voluntary, it's not even obligatory, or going to Salatul Eid, will cover it, will do the job. La Wallah. Tawbah, sincere tawbah, correct tawbah. How should it be? We get from the Qur'an, we get from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. First and foremost, it must be correct and it must be right. It must be sincere for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. خَالِصًا لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ Azza wa Jal. Sincerely for the sake of Allah. It must be clean, it must be pure in intention. You're not doing it to be seen by people. You're not doing it for some dunya with a purpose or just to be seem righteous or to seem like someone who's, mashaAllah, like they say, religious or practicing and all. All of these words. Don't forget about the heart. Don't forget about the one, ta'ala Allah wa taqaddis, who knows that which is in the hearts, he knows that which is real, while me and you do not know. We don't understand, we don't see, we don't know the reality. You may come to me, and you may come to me and ask me to forgive you for something you have done. And you may cry, and you may seem sincere, but inside your heart you really do not mean it. There may be some dunya purpose, behind it. And I don't know. I don't know if you're sincere or not. But Allah Jalla wa ala knows. So that first condition of your tawbah, when you know that you have committed wrong, that you have disobeyed Allah, that you have fallen short, that you have fallen and stumbled, that you have committed a Vulm, or you have wronged yourself and you have wronged Allah Jalla wa ala. You have gone beyond the boundaries. You have stepped outside the boundaries that Allah has set, the hudud. And you know that. And you realize that. And this tawbah now must be pure and sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then it must follow that you have regret. All of us today, right now, you must have regret. Nadam. 
And the Prophet وسلم, said that Nadam is Tawbah. You must have regret. You can't have this feeling inside of your heart or this feeling in the back of your mind like, I'm going back. Or it wasn't that bad. Or it actually was nice. Or you have no aversion to it. Or you're not appalled by that act. It doesn't really bother you. That's not tawbah. The sin, the thing that you did, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't make your heart quiver. It doesn't make your skin shiver. It doesn't seem distasteful to you. And you are not really sorry. And you know yourself. And we know ourselves. So you must have that nadam, you must have that regret. You feel shameful inside of yourself. Never mind in front of the people, in front of Allah. You remember we said, and we quoted the ayah yesterday, so important. يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَغْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ Unfortunately, a lot of people, they are shameful and they are shy in front of the police. They are shy and they are shameful in front of their relatives. They are shy and they are shameful in front of their friends. They are shy and they are shameful in front of their parents. They are shy and they are shameful in the masjid with the people and in front of the imam. But they are not shy or shameful in front of Allah. And He is with them by His knowledge. So there has to be that nadam. There has to be that regret. You feel sorrow. You feel shame. You feel sad and distasteful to that act that you did, to that thing you did. No matter how small it is, don't look at how small it is, but look at the greatness of the one that you have disobeyed. Allah Jalla Jalalu. And then you must have also with that tawbah, you want to sincerely repent to Allah Azza wa Jal, tawbah tan nasuha. Then you must have that resolution inside of yourself. We can say you must be serious inside of yourself, in your heart, your nafs. You ha must have that resolution inside of yourself that I'm never going back there. I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to touch that again. I'm never going to look there again. I'm never going to walk there again. I'm never going to take part in that again. And you have that resolution. And it's serious inside of yourself. When you put all of those together, then your tawbah will be accepted by Allah Jalla wa ala bi idnihi al ghafur al rahim. Then that is a tawbah which is correct. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, A ta'ib min al dhamb kaman la dhamba lah. Allahu akbar. So many opportunities. The one who makes tawbah, the one who repents to Allah, then he is as if, remember, he fulfills the conditions. It's a sincere and a correct tawbah. The one who makes tawbah to Allah and repents to Allah, then it is as if he is like the one who has no sin. It will be erased. And who will forgive the sins except Allah? But it's on us to move, to do something. And what better way again in the five salawat, in your sujood, in the darkness of night, in the qiyamul layl, stand. In the middle of the night, when Allah Jalla Jalalu, in a way that befits His Majesty, Ta'ala Allah wa Taqaddas, He descends to the lowest heaven, and never mind which part of the earth, which part of the world, and this time zone, and asking these questions, not befitting. For Allah, Rabbul Alameen, Jalla Jalalu, in a way that befits His Majesty, he descends to the lowest heaven, كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, and he asks, although he knows, تعالى الله وتقدس. 
Is there anyone asking that I may respond to him? Is there anyone requesting something that I may give to him? Is there anyone asking for forgiveness that I may forgive him? Is there anyone more forgiving and merciful than Allah? La wallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of your repentance. It is up to you. It is up to me. It is up to us. Whether we take heed before it's too late. Whether we admonish ourselves and we make hisab, accountability of ourselves before it's too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah. And it says in more than one place throughout the Qur'an, Ayyuhal Mubarakun, if we only read, the one who does this, and the one who does that, and the one who wrongs himself, and the one who commits this atrocity in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will have this punishment. They will be punished in this life, and in the, in the akhirah, there will be this punishment, and in Naru Jahannam, in the fire of hell, and so on. Illa, except, who? Illa man tab. Tawbah. Repentance. Illa man taba wa aman wa amila amalan saliha. Except the one who repents, the one who believes, the one who fortifies his iman, the one who works righteous deeds, five, pr five prayers, khams salawat, sadaqa, fasting, voluntary. Except the one who works righteous deeds. Fa'ulaik. Don't we want? Don't we need? What? Fa'ulaika yubaddilullah sayyatihim. Then Allah will change their bad deeds to hasanat. Wa kana Allah ghafoorur rahima. And Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. So it is upon us, ahibbati fillah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want? He is al ghafoor rahim Allah. And Allah accepts the tawbah of the one who is sincere. Wallahu yureed. I leave you with this. For myself first and then all of you. Wallahu yureed. Allah is waiting. Allah wants me and you to repent for our sins, to accept our repentance. Allah will accept the repentance. Wallahu yuridu alaykum to accept your tawbah. Wa yuridu You see the problem now. The problem is sometimes our peers, our friends, we're shy and we don't want to be left out. And those that have an influence over us and we're following the tales of those we shouldn't be following. And we don't want to be left out. We don't want to be the odd one out. We don't want to be the one alone. We have our friends and we have our companions and so on. But what do they want? Allah wants to accept your repentance. وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ But those who follow their desires, what do they want? أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا To further dissuade us, to take us away from the Surat Al-Mustaqeem, to take us away from Tawbah. And that's why we have to be aware. And that's why we have to be careful. And first and foremost, to do that and to change our ways before our appointment with death comes. May Allah give us husnul khatima, a good ending to this life, and save us from a terrible punishment in the grave first, and then on yawmul qiyamah in the hellfire. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بارك الله فيكم 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Oh.